Jesus Christ who died over 2,000 years ago. And we thank God for everything that he's done. But, but the Lord, he, he didn't give me a, a quote-unquote resurrection Sunday message. Amen? I know. So if you, if you, if you came looking for a, a specific resurrection Sunday message, I ask that you read Matthew yourself. Amen. Because that's not my assignment today. I need to be I need to be on point with whatever God. See, because I really believe that 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 resurrection Sunday is every day. Because every day that we get a chance to get up like he got up, we need to give him praise and we need to thank God for his goodness unto us. Every day. We used to sing a song when I was I was coming up. Some of y'all grew up. In that era with me, we used to sing a song that said, every day is a day of thanksgiving. And every day that I'm able to get up and give him thanks and give him praise, that's a day of resurrection for me because I can get up and bless the Lord for what he's done in my life. Okay, come on. Y'all need to talk back to me up in here this morning. If we got to close the doors, we'll close the doors so that we can focus. Amen. Because God's got something to say. And I need the people of God to have ears to hear, eyes to uh, see. And hearts to understand. And we don't want to miss it. We want to hear. Is it too cold in here? Y'all cold? All right. Somebody fix the air. Just turn it, turn it up a little bit. Yeah, just it is a little chilly. I don't I don't want to I want to make sure that I want, you know, I don't I don't want to leave anybody out. And I know we like to be, you know, comfortable. But how many of y'all know it's not about comfort? It's about receiving what for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. But but the Lord didn't give me a quote unquote resurrection Sunday message, but I'm going to preach what God gave me. Amen. How many of y'all know we need to have a right now word? We need to have what God needs. We need to have spoken to us what God needs us to hear right now. And, and I don't want to miss my assignment. I, I, I don't I don't want to be disobedient to what the Lord has given me. What God laid on my heart, and, and, and God had been staring in my heart all week. I, I, I gotta, I gotta, uh, I'm, I'm gonna be saying a lot of things this morning, and and even as I'm going through the scriptures, I'm, I'm gonna give you some scriptures that the Lord laid on my heart, but I need you to to uh, uh, really grab a hold of what God is saying because what what God was speaking to me in the Word. And even in fellowship this week with him, um, God was giving me significant nuggets. Uh, 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 let me let me say it like this. H- have you have you ever read something or heard something? And now the one thing that I teach and I believe the context determines meaning. So when you're reading the scriptures, if you read the whole, you know, from the beginning to the end, you get the whole scripture. But sometimes God will speak to us in code. You with me? God will, God will give you one word in a verse of scripture. Now, it's not relevant to the conversation, but your spirit grabs a hold of that thing. And God will say one thing, and you go like, wait a minute, hold that, that, that's, that's, wait, God, that's not what they're talking about. God said, but that's what I'm talking about. Can you grab a hold of what I'm saying? And God was giving me little code nuggets all throughout the scriptures. And, and one of the things that, that, that I wanted to, to grab a hold of, I, 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 I kept hearing God say that things are turning around for me. And somebody else in here, you know, you, you've been going through some things. And now, now that's not the title of the message. But that's the first thing that God said to me. He said, things are turning around for me. And I said, okay, God, I receive that. Because how many of y'all know sometimes when you're going through a rough patch, you need some things to turn around. And, and I kept hearing God say that, that, that things are turning around. And I said, okay, Father, thank you. I receive that. It's turning around for me. So I said, okay, God. And, and then I listened to that song by Vashon Mitchell, it's turning around for me. Amen. 
And I began to, that song was just, I was sitting in my desk at the house and, and I just threw my hands up for about an hour. All I could do was just give God praise because things are turning around. And I said, Father, I bless you. I give you praise because things are turning. I, I, somebody, you need to point to somebody or tap somebody on the shoulder and say, things are turning around for you. You need to grab a hold of that thing. I don't care what you're dealing with. I don't care where you've been and what you're going. Things are turning around for you. It may look bad. It may, you may seem like you just don't know how things are going to work out. But hear this prophetic word. Things are turning around for you. Say that. Say things are turning around for me. Ah, that's the word I heard. That's the first word I heard. I heard God say things are turning around. See, you got to grab a hold of that. And he began to speak that in my spirit because sometimes we think we good. But then God said, no, no, you're not as good as you need to be. And I've turned some things around for you. Mm -hmm. See, oh, you know what I heard my grandmama say? Grandma said, you know, God has kept us from danger seen and unseen. It's some stuff that almost got you that you didn't see it. And God protected you from it. He turned it around before it got to you. God rescued you before you got into that situation. God delivered you before it happened. Things turned around and you didn't even know it. He captured you. He rescued you and you didn't even see it coming. That's the good God that we serve. So things are turning around. That was the first thing he said. He said things are turning around for you. Then the Lord began to speak some things in my heart. And, and, and uh, yesterday I was at home and I, I just, Holy Spirit captured me again. He arrested me. He, I went downstairs in my basement and, and I, just, I just got in the presence of God. And God began to just speak some things seriously strong and heavy to my spirit that I'm going to give you now. That God said, this word is for you today. I don't know who you are. I, I know th this is what God told me. I said, God, is this word for me or for the people? He said, it's for both of you. Amen. It's for you and the people. Amen. So I said, okay, God, we receive. We receive everything you have. So, so turn with me. Ah, God, how you want me to do this? Where you want me to go first, Father? Go to Psalms 102. Go to Psalms 102. And, and, and I want you to hear this. And again, I want you to hear this in the spirit. This is a prophetic word. And, and, and I preach prophetically most of the time anyway because I want you to hear something specific. Specifically to you and your situation. But that first thing I want you to grab a hold of is that things are turning around for you. Don't lose sight of that. Don't, don't think for a moment that God has forgotten you, that God has left you. He's a, he has not. Things are turning. I don't care what your situation is. It's turning. Amen. If you believe it. Amen. That's the one thing that I heard God say this morning. He said, son, you got to believe. You got to lock in on your with that with your faith and lock in and believe that things are turning around. But Psalms 102. This is the second thing that God gave me. 102 verse 13. Psalms 102. Verse 13 says, and thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going we're gonna to read that again because some of y'all didn't get that. Look at this. It says, thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. Mm. I'm, man, I feel the Holy Ghost already. For the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. This is what I heard God say. And this is the title of the message. Mm. A set time of favor. Now, 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 I know, I know, I know you kind of trying to process that and figure. No, no. God said to me, he says that you have a set time for me to release my favor into your life. Mm, see, see, y'all, y'all not even getting it. I'm going to work with you. I'm going to work with you. 
because it took me a minute to see this too. God said things are turning around for me. And he said, as they're turning around, there's a set time for me to release my favor into your life. And you're going to begin to see some things that you couldn't see before because you've been in that place where you felt like God has left you. But God said, no, I've turned it around and I'm releasing that set time of favor all over your life. There's some favor about to blow up in your life and God's going to turn some things and you're going to see something and you're going to have what you didn't think you could have. The devil told you you weren't coming out. He said you didn't have victory, but God said, no, there's a set time of favor about to be released into your life. And God said, oh, I'm going to show you stuff that you know not. Things that you didn't expect. You thought I forgot you. Oh, I heard that in prayer this morning. God said, no, I heard your prayer. He said, I heard your prayer. Your prayers have been answered and they've been heard. And there's a set time of favor coming to your life if you'll receive it. But now if you're good, God said, well, you don't need me. God said, if you got it already and you're already good, God said, you don't need me. But he said, there's a set time of favor. How many of y'all want some set time of favor? You want God's favor to be released. At a, see, and, and I'm going to explain some stuff to you, too, because, see, God had to help me. I, 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 it took me a minute to understand, like, Father, what are you saying? He said, no, 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 no. I got you. You feel like you've been forgotten. You feel like you've been left all alone. Sometimes, you know, when you go through a, a storm or a test or a trial, you feel like you're out there by yourself. And God said to me, he said, no, son, I've always been with you. I will never leave you. And see, that's the one thing that you got to get in your spirit as an absolute. God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And when it's time for him to do whatever he's going to do, God is going to do it. And you got to have confidence in that. Because there's a set time for favor to be released into your life. So, 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 put a pin right there. Hold, hold, your, hold your thought right there. Everybody say there's a set time of favor. Mm, God says, say it again. And say, things are turning around for me. Set time of favor and things. Y'all, that's a winning combination right there. That's worth shouting about right there. If you've been going through anything, if God's done turn around and see, and oh, and that's what I'm going to show you today. See, it's turned around whether you can see it or not. Oh, it's already been, because everything God does is already done. We have to catch up with him. We have to see and really get in, in line and get in the flow of the Holy Spirit. But everything God promised you was already done. He's just waiting for us to see it. He's just waiting for us to believe it so it'll manifest. But everything that manifests has a set time. Okay, you know what? And that, see, that's, that's what God, he really began to minister to me. And I was saying this in Bible study a couple weeks ago. See, how many of y'all have really accepted Christ in your heart in here? Amen. If you were to die right now, you, you, you don't have a question or no doubt in your mind that you spend heaven, uh, uh, eternity in heaven. Yes. Amen. Now, physically, you're not in heaven. But you don't have a doubt that if you were to die, where you would go, right? Amen. God said everything else in the kingdom works the same way. It's absolute. You, when you saved, you saved. Amen. So guess what? If it's turned around, it's turned around. Yes, if it's a set, to, everything that God says is already done. God said it's already, everybody say it's already, done. it's already done. It's already done. God is saying, no, no, no. Everything I promised you is in his mind and his plan has already come to pass. Yes. But there's a set time for things to be released. Yes. For your eyes to see. Yes. But it's already been released in the heavens. It's already been released in the heavens. I'll say it again. It's already been released in the heavens. It's already come down. It's already yours, but it's just a set time. But you got to believe that. You got to see. See, I think it's I think it's Numbers 23, 19 says God is not a man that he should lie. He's the son of man that he should repent. God is not a liar. God is not. He's not going to give you a promise and not keep his word. So when God said it's done, it's done. You just got to believe that. It's just a set time. I don't care what you feel in your body. I don't care what your bank account says. God said, guess what? It's already turned around and there's a set time. 
the manifestation is going to come. Didn't the Bible say that Jesus, after in the fullness of time, the Son of God came? In the full, it, it was a period of time that Jesus, he came in the process to come to deliver man from his sin. He didn't just come immediately, but there was a set time. There was an appointed, oh, there it is. There's an appointed time for your manifestation. But it's still in God's mind and his plan. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. It's already, everybody say it's already done. It's already done. Do you believe that? Amen. It's already, it's all, and see, that's what you got to get in your mind. And that's what you got to tell the devil when stuff starts to happen in your life. No, no, it's already done. Get thee behind me, Satan. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Oh, there it is. The blood already took care of it. The blood already covered it because it's already done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Now, 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 let me, let me go back. Go to Romans chapter four. I, I've been I've been stuck in Romans for the last probably month or two. I can't I can't get out of Romans. And God keeps taking me back over here because because God's teaching me some things, y'all. I'm seeing some things in the spirit on a whole nother level because it's too much of the time when you believe in God for something. We get we get in God's way. And we figure we got to help God out. We got to, you know, you know, when, when sometimes when God tells us things. Because the manifestation hasn't come, the set time has not been released. It looks like God moving slow. How many of y'all know, but you know, what did the old people tell us? He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Amen. The God we serve is always on time. He's never late. He's always on time. But sometimes what happens is it looks like we, we got to help God out because God not moving fast enough. And God took me over here to Romans, and, and, and I've been, if you get a chance, if you really want to see the essence of, of God moving and you moving and it being a conflict, if you're doing it in your flesh and you're not doing it in the spirit, it's a problem. Romans 4 talks about us helping God out, and, 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 and it's talking about the life of Abraham. You don't need to help God out. Unless he now, if God gives you instructions, that's what you do. But outside of that, no, just stand back and just trust God. And and you know what? Not only trust God. My, I was talking to Elder Garnett yesterday. We were on the phone and we were talking, and we hadn't talked in a minute because we both been busy, had things going on. But see, the one thing I love about that brother—that's what I say. My—he's one of my best friends, the best friend that I've had, male-wise. We've been friends for probably thirty some years, and we get on the phone five minutes, and Aaron starts shopping on. I'm preaching to him, he preaching to me. Because, again, there's encouragement in the spirit. We just start talking, and, and immediately something starts coming out of his spirit, coming out of my spirit. And next to, and I, I, was, I was here at the church, actually. I was practicing and, and doing some different things. And I, I got up. I said, boy, you got me preaching right now. He pulled something out of me. Because, see, when you got somebody that know how to hit that button, yes, 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 sir. not the button we saw at the play. Those who were there understand what I'm talking. That's an inside joke. That's, you know, don't worry about that. But the button of the spirit, that button that moves your spirit, your baby started to leap like Elizabeth's baby. And he began to pull something out of my spirit. And we began to encourage one another. And the spirit, and I thank God for that, because you need to have somebody stir. See, you know what? There it is. Sometimes you need to even stir your own self up. You need to stir yourself because sometimes, you know, see, when you when you get off to yourself and you get isolated and you're dealing with stuff, it's so easy to get down. But you need to stir yourself up in the Lord. You need to begin to talk to you like the Bible says, David encouraged himself in the Lord. And you need to begin to encourage yourself and say, no, 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 no. What God said is true. He's not going back on it. Everything he said is already done. And I got to lock into that in the spirit. But over in Romans chapter 4, God gave me this, this, this one scripture. Go to verse 17, Romans chapter 4, 17. Everybody say a set time of favor. Now, now let, me, let me show you this real quick. 17 says, as it, is, as it is written, I have made thee the father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead, and call it those things which be not as though they were. Now, now, now. 
Remember, we were talking about everything that God said and everything that God promised is already done. Everything he said is already done. But 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 it, as it as it pertains to Abraham and the life of Abraham. Now, Abraham and we're going to go over to Genesis and we're going to look at it. Abraham was someone who believed God. We talked about y'all remember that? A couple of weeks ago, we talked about that. See, there's a, and that's, what, that's what I, where I was going a few minutes ago. Uh, uh, Elder Garnett and I was talking. See, there's a difference between believing and believe or belief. See, see you have to, and I have to, if everything that God has already said and already done, finished, we don't have to keep believing. All we have to do is believe. See, like, if, if I told you I was going to go, I don't know, take you out to dinner, after church. Oh, I shouldn't have brought up food because I know some of y'all are probably hungry. <laughs> Said that was the wrong, wrong thing I brought up. But if I told you I was going to feed you after service, mm -hmm. and I say, we're going to Red Lobster. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. <laughs> now, I told, now, let's, let, let, now how, how about I, I was feeling generous and I was going to pay for the whole church? Oh, oh, I got some hand claps on there. Oh, we got, oh, yeah, you start talking about food, red lobster, people get excited. Yeah. But now, say, look, look, listen, listen. If I told you I was going to do that, and you had confidence in what I said, and I'd never lied to you before, would you be questioning what I was going to do? Has God ever lied to you before? Do you have confidence in what he said he was going to do in your life? So you don't, now see, if I was a little shaky, you would be saying, well, Pastor, I don't know, you know. You know, you know we got some cousins and family like that. Some people that, that you know, they tell you they're going to hook you up, but the hookup's still coming. Remember those ones that you, you loaned the money to? Remember, like, like I told y'all a long time ago, you got family that you, you know what, just give it to them. Don't, don't, don't loan it. If you can't do it, don't give it. But if you, you can, just, just, you know, because some of, you know, now not everybody's the same way, and I'm not trying to put our families down. But y'all know some family going to give you their word. They're going to say they're going to do what they're going to do, and they're going to do it. And others, they just like, every time you see them, guess what? They, they duck and they hide. But, but the thing about it is, if God did you that way, you would have reason to, to question him. But if God has never done you that way, God said, don't keep believing me, but believe me. Take me at my word because I'm good for my word. I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. I just need you to believe. Get past your head and just believe God. Because God is not a man that he should lie. God didn't lie to you anytime. He never will because he can't lie. Just believe God. If everything's already turned around for you, guess what? Everything's already turned around for you. Amen. Just believe. Hang on to that because your mind, your situations will keep telling you, no, but that's not what I see. Well, see, there's a difference between what you see and the truth. Amen. See, the facts may be such and such hasn't happened yet, but the truth is what God said because God can't lie. Amen. It's already done. So believe God. So, so, so over here, it says that as it is written, I have made thee the father of many nations before him who what? Believed. Verse 17, even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things that be not as though they were. God wants you to know everything that he spoke over your life, every promise that he gave you in the midst of your situation he called that thing. It may not be in the natural right now, but guess what? It's already done. Amen. It's already done. It's already done. Everything has already been done. God said, I call, just like I told Abraham, I call those things that be not as though they were because in God's mind and in God's plan, it's already done. How many of y'all received that? I don't know where y'all at this morning. It's already, it's all, it's already done. And I'm being redundant for a reason because a lot of times that's where we get stuck. And see, we walk out of here and we think we're good. But when the enemy comes in like a flood on your mind, then you start questioning God. Well, 
And then go back to Romans 4, look at the first part of the chapter, and we start trying to figure out ways to help God out. And God said, I don't need your help. I just need you to believe. God said, I don't need you to do anything other than just believe me. That's why he called Abraham the father of many nations before he was the father of many nations. Because God said in his mind, he said, how many of y'all know whatever God says is established? It's the truth. It's the word. It's the absolute truth. When God says that you blessed and you're the head and not the tail, guess what? You're blessed and you're the head and not the tail. Amen. But do you believe that? Yes. Now, if you're still acting like you're poor and you're acting like you got problems, God said, well, that's not my fault. I told you that you were the head and not the tail. Right. God said, you're walking around thinking that you're something else. God said, that ain't what I told you. I told you that you were blessed. I told Abraham that he was the father of many nations before he had a child. Because that's, mm. God always sets it up before it comes. Mm. God, al he always, see, that, that's the kind of God we serve. The God we serve always sets you up before the manifestation comes. He gives you a heads up that it's about to happen, and he lets you know that this is going to happen in your life, and all you got to do is just trust me and believe. Sometimes we can't figure out why God is moving the way. He, listen, what did, what did he say on the inside? What did God speak? You know what? And I heard this. I heard this the other day. This thing, and I, I, I think I shared this um, again. I heard one of the one of the instructors say I said it. No, I said it last week. But I, I keep listening to the same things over and over again. Do you know the reason why God speaks to you on the inside? Remember, remember, remember over in Exodus and, and I think even um, even Le Leviticus, when God told the nation of Israel, he said that I'm going to be your God and you're going to be my people. And he talked about there was going to come a period where he was going to come on the inside of them. And after Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, God is now on the inside of us. Do you know why God speaks to you in that still, small voice? So that the enemy and everything on the outside can't hear what he's telling you. And he can't block your plan unless you start speaking what he says out of your mouth. Now, there's a set time to speak what God says, but the reason why God speaks to you and he gives you peace on the inside is because he wants to give you that inside track before the enemy can mess with you. Aren't you glad about that? Aren't you glad that God would like to give you an inside tip before something happens in your life if you'll listen on the inside? He'll speak to your spirit and he'll set you up ahead of time and let you know what's going to come, just you and him. Still small voice. Peace on the inside. He lets you know that you're going to be successful. Do you believe that? God said, I promised that to you. And he wants you to receive that in your heart. That's why he told Abraham, he said, I've called you the father of many nations before you had a child. Go, go to Genesis chapter 17 real quick. I, I got to work over here for a minute. And then, then I got a couple scriptures. Are y'all still in here? Yeah. I said, are y'all still in here? Yeah. You're going, to get your, you're going to get your Easter Sunday dinner. Hold on. Don't just check the box today. This ain't just something we do. We here every Sunday. We here every Sunday. This is, this is a way of life for us because we love God. And we come to be what God wants us to be. Genesis chapter 17. Let me read a couple things real quick. Starting at verse 4. Now remember I told you God was giving me code words throughout the scripture? So I'm going I'm to skip through some things. You got to go back and look at the whole chapter. But I'm going to pull the verses that God told me to pull, and I want you to grab the point, and then we're going to move on. Amen? I said amen? Yes. All right. Verse 4 of Genesis chapter 17. <clears throat> it says, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham, the father of many nations, have I made thee. Now look at what God said. He said, <clears throat> I've taken your, your name from Abram, which means exalted father, to Abraham, which means father of many nations. The one thing that I want you to understand, and I preached this here several years ago, something's about to happen when God changed your name. 
when God starts changing your name, something, I'm t- didn't I say things were turning around for me? When God starts speaking some different things, you start hearing some different things on the inside, and God starts speaking things over you, something's about to happen. Abram, all these years, he promised him, you're going to have a son. You're going to, be, uh, you're going to, you're going to bear Isaac. You and, and, and uh, Sarah are old in age, but you're going to bear a son. And they had problems with that. But when God starts changing their names, wait a minute, hold up. Something, something, whoa, wait, whoa. I'm no more an exalted father, but I'm the father of many names. Wait a minute. Do you know that, that when you got saved, your name changed? Because you're the blood bar of the redeemed. God changed your name when you accepted Christ. See, you, you have a new status in God. You're not the same old creature. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. See, when you got saved, your name changed in the spirit. You're not that you're a son of God. You're a daughter of God. There's some rights and some things that you have access to because you're a son or daughter of God. Yeah. When God changed your name, something about to happen. Oh, yeah. And he opens you up to a new way of life in the spirit and in the natural. Yes. If you believe. Yes. But now, see, if, if, if you saved and you walk in with God and you still see yourself like you did out there. God said there's a disconnect. We don't even operate on the same principles as the world. Amen. How many of y'all know uh, Isaiah chapter 6? And the Bible talks about unto us a child is born. Amen. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. That's the, we operate under the government of the kingdom of God. We don't operate under the kingdom of this world's government. We, we operate under the kingdom of God. And you can't see yourself as a regular Christian or a regular person when you saved and you belong to Christ. Oh, that, I'll say that. God said, you said it right. You, you can't even see yourself as an average Christian. Y'all, do you know when you get saved, you become a supernatural being? Do you know you have access to supernatural things in the spirit that the world don't have access to? You're a supernatural being when you get saved. But if you just see yourself as, oh, I'm just still me, you know. Went down wet. I mean, went in wet or came out wet. Y'all know I got <laughs> baptized. Yes, yes. I was trying to say, you know, went, went down a dry devil, came out a wet devil. That's what they say. No, that ain't true. I got saved. My life changed for real. Yes, yes. I'm a new creature. I'm a new creation in Christ. I, something happened. I got access to things that the world don't have access. Because, see, I can pray in a moment's notice. I can pray in the Holy Ghost and immediately begin to access the kingdom of God. Yes. I can step into another realm, another dimension in the spirit that the world can't do. I can hear a word in in, in milliseconds that the world can't can't even hear because I can step into the spirit. But if you see yourself as just a regular person, and and, and what did Jesus die for then? If we got saved, we gave our heart to him and we stayed the same, what what good is it? But no, I, I want everything that he has for me. I want all the benefits. And, and something happens when your name changed. Yes. When your name got changed in the kingdom, you became a new creature. God has new dimensions, new levels in the spirit that he wants to take you to. But if you stay right here, you'll never see it. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Go with me real quick to, to Genesis 17, verses 15 to 16. Look at this. Look at this. Are y'all still here? I said, are y'all still here? Somebody, 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 wake them up if they sleep. Punch them in the, hit them in the ribs. Punch them in the ribs or something. Wake them up. Pop them upside the head. Go ahead. In Jesus' name, I love you. Y'all remember back in the day, oops, upside your head? No, no, no. Lisa laughed at that. Look at her. Remember Lisa? You remember that song? Oh, we have fun in here, though. I ain't, I'm not all stuck up in, in trying to. I'm, I love God, and you know what? I love God being me. See, if I got to try to be somebody else, I might as well quit. Just be who you're going to be. If we looking for the church down the street that, you know, that, yeah, you know. Genesis chapter 17, verses 15 and 16. I got a long ways to go real quick. Uh, 15, 16, and God said unto Abraham, as Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her Sarai, but Sarah 
shall her name be. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her and she shall be called what? A mother of many, a mother of nations. And kings of people shall be of her. See, so God changed her name. God can't just change the man's name and not change the woman's name. How many of y'all know they won? And God is saying to them, he says, you both have a purpose. And that's why husband and wives up in here, look at me. You got a purpose together. God didn't just call one of you. He called both of you to work together as a team for his glory. He's the father of many nations. She's the, the mother of many nations. Guess what? Because the nations are going to come out of them. And see, God is trying to say right now, God said, I'm trying to bring your greatness out of you. There's some things on the inside of you that God's made, some deposits that he's made that he's trying to pull up out of you, but will you let him do it? Can you all get in agreement? Oh, ain't nobody. Say amen, like. God is trying to get us to understand that he's called us to do great things. Y'all, you know, and, and Holy Spirit said something to me while I was sitting over on the keyboard. He says, you know what? Too much of the time we are average Christians. When are we going to go above and beyond for the glory of God? When are we going to do more than what God said? Come on, y'all. God is calling us to do more. He's calling us to do more. Me too. Pushing me to another level. And I'm going like, God, what? God said, because I'm trying to make you greater. I'm trying to put, I'm trying to draw that greatness out of you because it's on the inside. If God's on the inside of me, guess what? Greatness is on the inside of me. Yeah. Yeah. Got to come out. Got to come. It's got to come out. It's got to come out. Change her name. Look, now go, go, to, go to verse 21. And it says, but my covenant will I establish. Look at this. With Isaac which Sarah shall bear unto thee, look at this, at this set time in the next year. Everybody say set time. He had a set time that this was going to happen. And this is what God began to really speak to me yesterday as I was, I was ministering, I mean, meditating on this. God said to me, you got to understand, every promise that I made to you is coming to pass at a set time. So Galatians, I think it's six and nine says, be ye not weary in well doing for in due season, you'll reap if you. So God says, if you don't faint, your set time assignment and blessing is going to come to pass. Amen. I have a set time. See, and, and, and what happens is a lot of times we, we pray and it looks like God is not going to answer your prayer. It looks like God hasn't moved. But God said, no, there's a set time for me to release that thing in your life. Uh, you know, sometimes we're not ready to receive the promise. God hasn't developed you enough yet. You haven't. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, we don't have we don't have little kids in here, but I can say we, you ain't been through enough hell yet to qualify for your promise. Oh, see, some y'all don't sit up here. Look at me like that. You ain't gone through enough trouble yet. Mm, you have not. You haven't cried enough yet. You haven't shed enough blood of your own yet to qualify for the promise. Because he said there's a set time it's going to come to pass. You ain't been through enough yet. All right. See, sometimes we think we're ready for it. Because uh -huh. God told us he was going to do such and such, but God said, no. See, how many of y'all women, uh, you know, and I, I use this all the time, having babies. Yeah. You can't have that baby before the time is ready. That's right. You can't have a child before the set time for that child. To, and I don't care what the doctor told you. The doctor still don't know exactly when the baby going to come. The doctor still doesn't know when your water's going to break. The doctor has no idea, but the thing about it is God knows that it's a set time. And how many of y'all know, I heard that in the spirit, God, I'll say that. There's some things he's impregnated all of us with, and he wants to release at a set time. There's some dreams, some visions, some things that he put on the inside of you, and he wants you to release at his appointed time. But if you don't, guess what? You'll abort your mission. You'll abort your own baby. You know why? And you know what causes abortion for us in the kingdom and in the spirit? We don't believe. See, when you doubt God, when you question God, when you don't think God is going to come through for you and you start seeing your circumstances and you stop believing what God told you, you abort your own baby. 
And God said, but if you stay in faith and you trust me, and you, <clears throat> excuse me, and you be like Abraham and you believe, guess what? Oh, that baby going to come to pass. It's going to be birthed. That thing's going to be birthed in you, but you're going to have to believe God and stand on his word. Yes. Amen. He told Abraham, sir, y'all going to have a baby. 199, 190. Can y'all look at that? Can you, can you imagine? How many of y'all women here want to have a baby when you're 90? Come on, come on. Come on, let me, let me, let me see, let me see 65. Come on. Come on, 70, how can I get a 70? Come on, let's go, let's push it a little higher. Let's get a little 80. Come on, come on, 80. Have a baby at 80? Not alone, 80, but 90 have a baby set. That's why when you look down and you look in the text a little bit further, further Sarah and Abraham both, they laughed. They said, God, you got to be kidding. Uh -huh. Sarah said, look, I've been barren all my life. Mm -hmm. Abraham wasn't kicking up no dust neither. Right. <laughs> Abraham wasn't doing, come on, y'all, come on. Yo, Abraham, look, because you can put it on the woman all you want. You know, you know, sometimes when things are happening, you go, well, you know, we go get checked or whatever. Okay, all right, let's see. <laughs> Neither one of them, you know what? Yeah, come on, y'all. Can I go back down the way a little bit? Yeah. Neither one of them was making no noise. All right. All right. You remember that old, that old saying, I can't make no noise? Yes. Oh, Lord Jesus. Y'all been, right. been saved too long. Y'all been saved. Y'all just, y'all forget. Nobody making no noise. But guess what? The one that made the most noise was God said, I put something on the inside of you. Yes. And I'm going to keep my word. Right. Will you believe my word? God said, all I need, and God said, all I need to do is just believe. Yeah. Just believe I'm going to do it. Because there's a set time for that baby to come to pass, mm -hmm. and it was. Now, go to, go to chapter 20. Uh, what I got? Chapter 21. And I want to show you something real quick. Then I, I'm going to give you two scriptures, and then I'm going to let y'all go, because I know y'all hungry. I hear y'all stomachs growling up here. <laughs> 21. Genesis chapter 21. Because I need to talk about this set time a little bit more so you can grab a hold of this. Genesis chapter 21, verse 1 says, And the Lord visited Sarah as he said. Oh, so God said it, and he showed up. That's what he's trying to get you to believe in your own situation. If he said it, he's going to show up, but it's a set time. But look at what it says. And it says, and he said, And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Verse 2 says, And Sarah did what? Conceived. And bear Abraham a son in his old age at a what? Time. Which God had what? So you mean God told them something before and he came through like he said? That's the kind of God we serve. He will keep his word. He's not slack concerning any of his promises. If you just keep believing, God said, I'll show up like I said. And he said, in a year from now, I'm going to show up. So guess what? It was a year later because God can't lie. Everything he promised happened like he said. Set time, set time. This 90-year-old woman gets pregnant. Now, I didn't, I didn't have a chance to really go over, and, and, and if you go to Galatians, I think it's Galatians 4, I believe I was, where, was, where are my notes at? I was, I was studying some things, and I had, uh, just so you can have it. Galatians chapter 4, if you read 22 through 31, it talks about the child that was of the flesh and the child of the promise. See, the thing about it was, remember when, when, when Abraham looked like he wasn't going to be able to get Sarah pregnant? He slept with Ishmael, I mean, uh, slept with uh, Hagar, Ishmael's mother. He slept with Hagar and produced a child. Ishmael become the, became the child of sin. See, when God doesn't move when you think he should move, don't try to help him out because what you'll do is create a sinful situation for your life. You create sin. You create a problem that God has got to work. Now, now, how many of y'all know? Even in in all of that, God can still work it together for your good. But God said, "Had you stay." How many of y'all know? There's a difference between God's permissive will and His perfect will. His perfect will is that you just believe Him. His permissive will is what He allows you to do, and He covers you with His grace. Stay out of God's situation. Uh, what is it? Romans six and one says, "Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound?" God forbid. God said, "I don't need your help." When God's not moving, just believe for your appointed time. And God said, guess what? The manifestation will happen just like I promised you. And you don't have to worry about any repercussions of sin. And if you go over, you read Galatians 4, it talks about that. Because Ishmael was born 
he and Isaac fought. The Arabic nation came from Ishmael. To this day, they still fighting because of the sin of Abraham. So don't try to help God out. Just wait for your appointed time or your set time. All right, let me, let me go. Let me go. Turn me real quick to Isaiah chapter 40. I know, I know this is Resurrection Sunday, but and you know what? God said there's some stuff in us that need to be resurrected. There's some things that God said he needs to, you to understand that he's given you a place that he's going to bless you, and he sent you in that place, and he's going to show you some things that you know not if you really trust him. If you really believe him, God said, I'm going to reveal myself to you in areas and places in your life that you never thought possible. And God said, I made, it's a whole lot of y'all in here God's made promises to, but you haven't believed him. You haven't trusted him, and you haven't waited for your set time. You started doing things in the flesh. God said he was going to take care of some things for you financially, but you use your credit card. You didn't believe God. You didn't trust God. God said he was going to bless you with a new home, but you couldn't wait. So you went out and did the loan and stuff on your own. And God said, now the struggle is real, ain't it? I don't like using that term, but you, you created that. God said, but see, when you try to help God out, you create a sinful situation. God said, leave it alone. Let me let me help you. Let me show you. Let me. But you have to see. See, if you're going to wait on your set time, you got to wait. You got to have some patience. You got to be patient. So Isaiah. What I tell you, Isaiah, chapter 40, 40. Look at verse one. And this is, for, you know, this is encouragement to somebody. This is what I want you to hear. This is what God really began to, he began to turn this on me because he wants to give you some encouragement. I got, I got two minutes and I got a couple scriptures, but y'all scriptures, but going to have to wait, amen? amen. <laughs> if you need to leave, I understand. But as far as I'm concerned, we ain't going nowhere until I'm done. Glory to God. You see how I'm sweating up here? All right. I'm working. Y'all just sitting eating, taking it easy. Amen. Isaiah 40, verse 1 says, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished and her iniquity, guess what, is pardoned. For she has received of the Lord's hand, look at this, double for all her sins. Now, God said, I forgave you. Israel messed up. But God says, I've forgiven you to the point where I'm going to give you double for your trouble if you wait. Remember I said, God spoke some cold words to me. God says, I, see, you, you think that your set time is in vain, but God said, if you keep waiting on me, guess what? I'm going to give you double for waiting. I, First Lady, I can't get no help up in here today, baby. I don't know what's wrong, but guess what? It don't even matter. God said, I'm going to give you double for your trouble if you learn how to wait on me. I'm going to reward you twice as much if you'll wait for your set time and not run around and do what you think. God said, I will give you double. I don't know about, I see, see y'all like, y'all like ones and two, you know, I, I like, give, give me double. Some of y'all out there coupon shoppers, y'all double couponers. Come on. Y'all get excited when you use those double coupons. I know you do. But God said, I will give you double. I will give you, come on, y'all, you need to get this. You need, to, you'll get double if you wait on your set time. And that's what God said to me. This is a word for you. This is, and again, it may not be in the context of the scripture, but God said, you need to tell the people that I'll give them double if they'll wait. You'll get a double reward if you wait on God. Go with me real quick. I got another scripture. Go to Isaiah chapter 60. Is this helping anybody? I, I take that as an amen. Isaiah chapter 60. Go to verse 10. Look at what this says. It says, And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, 
and their kingdoms shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I have smote thee, but in my favor have I given thee mercy. So God not only said that if you wait for your set time, I'll give you double, but I'll show you mercy. Mercy is what you should have gotten. I'm sorry, let me say it the other way. Punishment is what you should have gotten, but God gave you mercy. Punishment is what, because of your sin, God said, guess what? I'm going to show you mercy. And he's going to give you favor. He's going to make sure that he covers you if you'll wait for your set time. If you'll wait on your set time. God said there's a set time for me to bring some things to pass in your life. But God said, I'll show you mercy and I'll give you double in your payment if you'll wait on me. Let me give you one more scripture and I'll let y'all go. Amen. Go to, go to Isaiah chapter 61. Go to verse 7. No, 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 no. Go back over. Go back over. Oh, I just heard the Holy Spirit. He said, no, no, no. Go back over to Isaiah 60. He said, read verse 11. Let me read 10 and 11 together. And it says, and the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their king shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath smote thee, but in my favor I shall have mercy on thee. Look at verse 11. It says, therefore thy gates shall be open, what? Continually, and they shall not be shut day, shut day or night, that man may bring unto, look at this, unto thee the forces of the Gentile, and that their kings may be brought. God said he's going to bring to you more than you can handle if you just stay right there and wait on your appointed time. God said, I'm going to shower you with blessings. I'm going to flood you with things that you didn't even think you could handle if you just learned to wait on your set time. God says, I'm going to cover you with mercy and shower you with things that you didn't even think. The Gentiles, those wicked folk that see, how many of y'all know the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just? God said, I'm going to bring you stuff that you didn't even have to work for if you wait on your set time. Somebody ought to receive that. Somebody ought to be glad about that. If you learn to wait on God, your set time will bring a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. But God said you got to learn to wait. You got to stay in that set time, in that set place, and receive what God has for you. Don't get ahead of God. Don't get busy. Don't think that you got the answer. No, he got the answer for you. Just wait. In that set time, favor, blessing, everything, everything. Because you know what? I, I heard, I heard, uh, I heard Apostle say something the other day that really just, you know, it just blew my mind. You know, you know, you may pray for one thing. And when I say this, this is going to really, this is going to really shock you because it shocked me. You, you might ask God. Listen to this, y'all. Everybody look up here. You might ask God to do one thing. Let's say, let's say you might say, God, heal my body. And listen to this statement that I'm going to make. Sister Lori, listen to this. God can't just heal your body. Because it's too much of God to just give you just what you ask for. God is always going to give you more. That's why Ephesians 3 and 20 says he's able to do exceeding and abundantly above whatever you could ask or think. See, when you pray for one thing, God don't have his mind on what you ask for. He has his mind on blessing you way beyond whatever you ask for. He just can't give you one thing because there's so much love, there's so much compassion, so much goodness in him. He's got to give you so much more. That's why when God blesses you, you go like, now I didn't ask for all that, but God said, but that's my love. That's my compassion. That's my mercy. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you double instead of what you just asked for. Remember Solomon when he asked God, when God said to him, he, he said, what do you desire? And he said, for wisdom, mm -hmm. to just to lead and to guide and to govern your people. God said, guess what? Guess what? God said, I'm going to give you that and what you didn't ask for. 
God always does more than whatever you can even ask or think because God loves you. He's, God just can't answer your prayer. He's always going to give you more. See, that's why he wants you to live and me to live an abundant life. God don't expect us to be just average Christians. He expects us to expect great things and greater than what we ask because that's how he operates. Everything he does is much more than what you ask for. Now go with me to, to Isaiah 61, and I'm going to close. I'm going to take my seat. Isaiah 61, verse 7. Look at what it says. For your shame, you shall have what? Oh. He said, for your shame, for your shame. He said, I love you so much. Even in the shameful things that you've done, I'm going to give you double. I'm going to reward you with good things. I'm going to bless you. I'll give you double. For your confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess what? The double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. You understand that God is trying to get you double. He's trying to give you so much more if you'll stay in your set time. And just wait. Just wait on God. Just trust God. Just believe God in that thing that he promised you because he's going to bring it to pass. Remember what he did with Abraham? It's going to show up. And Sarah, the baby will show up. But can you wait? Because there's a set time for your blessing to manifest. There's a set time. So don't get weary in well-doing. Don't get frustrated because it doesn't look like it's coming to pass. God said there's a set time for your favor to be released. He says, I'm going to release favor into your life if you'll wait in that set time. Just stay right there. I know it's hard. I know sometimes you feel like you want to quit. You want to throw in the towel. But God said, if you just stay in that place and just sit there, just keep praying. Oh, you know what? Praise is your weapon. Praise always brings you out. That, see, that's the way to get you your head up. If you start throwing your hands up and start giving God praise while you're waiting, guess what? That'll cause the enemy to flee from you because the enemy get confused because you ain't praising him. You're giving God praise. If you start blessing God and give God praise while you're waiting, guess what? That set time of favor will manifest quicker than you know. And then you'll start seeing things popping. Start showing up, start showing up, and you go like, God, but I didn't. God said, but I did. Because you're my son, you're my daughter. I love you double. Mm, you know what I just heard God say? Double favor. Now, how you get double favor? I don't know. That's God's. That's God's language. Double favor. Double favor. Everybody say, I got double favor. I got double, favor. double favor. God will bless. If you hang in your set time and wait, God said, I'll give you a double favor. Stuff that didn't look like it was going to work out the way you thought, God will turn that thing around and you get double favor. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That is worth receiving something about and getting excited. You ought to get excited. He that has ears to hear, so let him hear. If you don't want to keep what you got, amen, and I'll take yours. I'll ask God to give me yours. If you don't want it, if you're good the way you are, go ahead and receive what you got. But I, I want all that God, and he's going to give me double favor, mercy. He's going to bless me and take me beyond where I am right now. Okay, if you good, your bank account's set and everything good, I want everything he got and some. I want all that God has for me. On this resurrection Sunday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, can we stand up and give God some praise? Can we yeah. thank God for double in our set time of favor? Can we get excited about God? Okay, all right. Amen. That's all right, but I give you praise, God. Oh, I'm not going to let no rocks cry out for me, God. I thank you, God. I give you praise. I give you glory, God. I give you honor because you're worthy. In the midst of my situation, I give you praise. I'm going to wait on my set time. I ain't going nowhere. I'm going, you know what? I'm going to stay right here and I'm going to give him praise. I'm going to thank him in the midst of what I'm going through. I'm going to thank him and wait on my set time of favor. So when he releases it, I'll be in the right posture to receive it. I'll be in the right place to receive what he has for me. Oh, God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, God. 
a set time of favor. God's favor is all over your life if you receive, if you believe it, and you'll receive it. It'll manifest. It'll man. It'll manifest. But you gotta believe it. He's not going to do it the way you think he should. He's going to do it the way he said in his heart and his purpose and his plan for your life. Glory to God. A set time of favor. Just wait. I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what the enemy says. You just wait on your set time of favor. You just stand there and wait on your set time of favor. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we bless you. Every head bow, every eye closed. Father, I thank you right now. God, we thank you for a set time of favor. We thank you, God, that we trust you even the more, God. We trust you. Even when we can't see our way out, God, we're going to keep standing and we're going to wait on that set time of favor. I pray right now, Father God, that your people's ears and their eyes and their hearts will be open to receive so that you can manifest the blessing that you have for them. God, I pray that you bless everyone under the sound of my voice, God. Prick the scales off of their eyes, God. Unclog their ears, God. And God, tenderize their hearts so they'll receive from you. I thank you, Lord. If you're under the sound of my voice and you don't know Jesus, if you've not accepted Jesus on this Resurrection Sunday, don't walk out of here not having accepted Christ into your heart. He wants to unleash his favor in your life. He wants to bless you in ways that you never thought possible. But that only comes when you embrace him and you accept him as Lord and Savior. And if you're under the sound of my voice and you don't know Jesus, on this Resurrection Sunday, 2019, raise your hand. Right where you are. You don't have to come to the aisle. Just raise your hand, and we'll pray for you wherever you are. Hallelujah. Just, just raise your hand. We, we're going to have a lead a simple prayer. All you got to do is just receive God into your heart, and you can be saved. Yeah, it's, just, it's simple, simple. All, what, what we're going to pray, all you got to do is just pray it and believe it, and he'll come into your heart. He'll come into your Amen. 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 He loved you so much that he sent Jesus to die for you. If it was just you, he would have sent his son. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe you walk with God at one point and, and you fell out of, uh, uh, of love and out of fellowship with him and you left the church and you left your relationship with God and you want to come back home today. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. You can come and, and, and partake in this simple prayer that we're going to pray. A prayer of restoration. A prayer of, rest, of reconciliation. You can come back to God right now. We're going to pray this prayer. All you got to do is believe it in your heart. All you got to do is believe it in your heart. And just mean it. Because God is a real God and he looks at your heart. He doesn't look at the things that we do on the outside. He looks at your heart. Hallelujah. Maybe on this Resurrection Sunday, you're looking for a church home. You're looking for somewhere where you can learn the word and you can grow thereby. Slip your hand up. We'll, we'll lead you. You can join our ministry. And if not, we can lead you to another one. If you want to go somewhere, it don't matter. It's about the body of Christ. It's not in a building. It's about those who believe God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see. You can put your hands down. I see. Glory to God. Glory to God. Pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I want everybody praying. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this day. Thank you, Jesus, for sending your son to die and to be raised from the dead for me. Lord Jesus, Come into my heart. Save me, Jesus. I want to live for you. 
I yield my life. I yield my whole being unto you. Save me now. And I'll serve you the rest of my life. Thank you for eternal life through Jesus Christ. Now, Father, I pray right now, everybody that prayed that prayer and meant it, Jesus, you just came into their heart, whether for the first time or to be restored through a backslidden life. We thank you, God, that they've been forgiven of their sins through your blood. So, Father, I pray right now that this prayer is sealed. I pray that everybody that prayed the prayer and meant it, Lord God, they just received you into their heart, God, and their lives will never be the same. Breathe on them afresh, God. Touch them right now, God, and deliver them from the evil one. We thank you, Father. We praise you and we glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we put our hands together and give him praise? Can we thank God? Hallelujah.